Uh, we okay. cannot come on air unless we're giggling, and so uh, okay. mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Good evening and welcome. You are watching the Zone Blitz. We are the weekly webcast produced by NFL Female. www.nflfemale.com. Be sure to jump on our website and check out all the latest and greatest articles by our fantastic women who uh, cover their team so well and love them so well. Uh, we're going to be talking NFC South tonight with um, some of our N NFC South OFRs. I am Sharona. I am the official NFL fan reporter for NFL Female. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports by Sharona. And without further ado, I have to bring in my wonderful co-host who keeps me going, who keeps me straight, who makes sure that this show th this show could not do uh, anything <laughs> without her. Sonia, how are you? I am doing great, and you know that you are just as equal of part of this show and keeping it running and keeping it I got to tell you guys, <laughs> if, if Sonia and I ever released our text messages, it would, <laughs> let me just so say, cool. it would be awesome. <laughs> awesome or obscene? Well, <laughs> maybe a little bit more awesome. I, I think I'm going to plead the fifth on that. I agree. And I'm going <laughs> to my lawyer, Sharona. I plead the fifth. <laughs> NFC South, right? NFC exactly. South. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Sonia. I am the official fan reporter for the Detroit Lions for NFLfemale.com. You can find me on Twitter at NFL or at NFL Female. Well, kind of indirectly, yes, but you can also find me on Twitter at mom, the number two, the number three, RN. And tonight we are talking NFC South. I am so excited because guess what, guys? We have two newbies on tonight. Two new people who we haven't had on before, but we love interacting with them on Twitter. So I am so excited to get started and to talk with them tonight. First up, we have Jan, and Jan is representing our Bucks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who had a big day today. I hear somebody was in town, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy that nobody knows about, never heard anything about. I know. Exactly. It's a random guy. I hope all the, um, you know, the crab legs are still there. Um, anyway. <laughs> Why don't you say hi, Jan, and tell everybody where they can find you. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I'm Jan, and of course the official reporter for Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who I love. And <laughs> I can be seen um, or heard or written or followed on Twitter <laughs> at a Pignitis, P-I-G-N-I-T-E, at Pignite. And Pignite. that should do it. Yep. Very good. And there's a whole story for that name, but I won't go into it. <laughs> okay, we'll have to tell us later on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> and then also we have representing Who Dat Nation. Who Dat said he's going to beat them things. <laughs> Kat, welcome, Kat. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You want to tell everybody where we can find you? Thank you for having me. You can find me on Twitter at K Lash Williams. That's L A S H W I. L L I A M S with a K in front. I just forgot how to spell my own last name. It's okay. It has so, to be that's good, but so Clash Williams with a K. Very, yeah. very good. And we'll tweet it all out. We've uh, tweeted the show details, and so you can find all the Twitter links in that. Um, so no worries. We'll make sure everybody knows where to find um, all of us out there in the Twitter sphere. Mm -hmm. Twitterverse. All right, so let's get started talking about some bucks. Oh, gosh. So, Jan, I don't know why I always want to call you Pat for some reason. Anyway. I've been called many things. <laughs> A couple of them to your face or something. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hi, Jan. So, tell me about the bucks in the two... 2014 season. I know it wasn't the greatest, but let's get your take on it since we haven't really had anybody representing the Bucks on the show yet. Yeah. So why don't you go ahead and give us our, your take on the 2014 season. Okay. Well, what started out, we thought, was going to be a pretty good season. We had a brand new coach. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, he had some, some of the same kind of mindset that the Buccaneers have been used to when they did have success, which was a defensive-minded coach. Mm -hmm. um, but that quickly fell apart when the season started. Um, we ended up 2-14. and 14. I almost can't say those words. Um, and what I think um, 
what was really disheartening was that we started out um, with an offensive coordinator that was not there. So pretty much the whole yeah. season, part of our problem was that we did not have an offensive coordinator. Um, and the person that was sort of named as an interim of a coordinator was a gentleman that was a quarterback's coach and who he also was responsible for calling all the plays. And he had never called plays in the NFL before. Mm -hmm. And um, as a spectator watching the sport, you certainly could tell that that was what was going on. I it was, was a, a little bit, issue. yeah, I was very irritated that um, Levy, our coach Levy Smith, didn't come in and do something about that. Um, yeah. You know, of course, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors, but we kind of lived with it and it just kind of snowballed and got worse and worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if I had to just name some of the reasons why we didn't do so well, number one was a new head coach. Um, mm -hmm. Also, we had some new systems that were implemented. Um, a new quarterback that we hadn't seen, although Lovey had, had worked with him before. Um, mm -hmm. Besides losing our offensive coordinator, um, we had poor play by our offensive line. It was pathetic. And again, I, I kind of blame the coaching staff on that too because they let two very good offensive linemen go without getting someone to replace them You know, that was as, at least as good a quality as what they were. Um, and I think also... Um, that uh, the defense, um, although we've always been a defensive-minded team, and even the year before we were pretty good on defense, I think that new system of the Tampa 2, which really involves a lot of trust, um, it did really that trust issue didn't partake in, in anything um, the whole year until maybe the last two or three games when all of a sudden those guys did start trusting each other, stay in their area, not going out. And uh, actually, Alteron Werner, one of our guys, actually said, the other day on um, the NFL channel that it wasn't until the last two or three game, games that he felt comfortable there and would stay in his right position so that the Tampa 2 or a rendition of it could work properly. So mm -hmm. I think those all of those things are probably the reason why we did so poorly. Um, and it was, it, was, it was just sad for us spectators, us people have season tickets to go there and week after week have such hope and it just not work out that way. Jan, I agree with you. I think in you know, none of us know what, what really goes on behind the scenes, but it was clearly an issue not having an offensive play caller. And um, and I completely agree with you. I, too, felt like Lovey Smith should have stepped in and, and done something about it. Yeah, he, he's very hard to read. He's a very mellow person as far as his the way he mm -hmm. acts on the sidelines and interacts appears to interact with his players. He's a sort of a Tony Dungy, quiet guy on the sideline. He's not the rah-rah guy or anything. But um, I just felt like, you know, he, they needed some leadership to come in there and, and do something about those, those situations because the players can only do what, you know, they're coached mm -hmm. to do. And um, I know he's not an offensive guy, but I really was disappointed that he didn't intervene early yeah. to make something happen. Yeah, he's not an offensive guy, um, but you would have thought that he learned that lesson because he was very much like that in Chicago, too. Yeah. And, and ultimately, it cost him his job. Mm -hmm. And so I think, to me, that was the more troubling thing about it is you were like, Lovey have... Did you not learn anything from that? <laughs> um, so, yeah, but now I'm a Lovey Smith fan, don't get me wrong, and I do think right. that, um, you know, he's a, he's a very good coach, and I think that the Buccaneers can have a lot of success under him. Obviously, the quarterback situation yeah. is, um, is, is oh, the yeah. big thing. They were back and forth, yo-yoing between Mike Glenn and Josh McCown. McCown's been released. He's now signed by the Buffalo Bills. Um, it, it looks like Jameis Winston's going to be the draft pick. How do you feel about that? I love it. Um, I actually, yes, I do. I actually, <laughs> you have to remember that not far up the road, just five hours, I know. you nation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people live here in Tampa Bay, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, I like Jameis Winston. I went uh, and, and tried to do a comparison of him and Mariota myself. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, the way I feel is that he's um, probably uh, the better uh, choice as being already pro-ready. And mm -hmm. I kind of, I'm stealing a little line that um, <clears throat> the guys had written, and I, I said I, to myself, this kind of tells me exactly 
you know, how I feel about um, Jameis Winston and for over Mariota, in, in other words. Um, mm. Basically, um, wait a minute, let me find my little note here. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. okay. <laughs> um, oh, I'm missing a page. Anyway, basically what it <laughs> said was that there are less questions about Jameis Winston on the field than there are with Mariota on the field. There may be a lot of questions about Jameis off the field, but on the field you know exactly what he can do. Yeah. He's got a strong arm, he, he can throw the ball, he's got super IQ for football, and I just feel more comfortable with him myself. Not that Mariota's not a, a, a nice kid and, and a good player and everything, but the way I perceive it is that if Mariota were to be picked, we might, it might be too much down the road before he can get into the system and do his thing. And I, not that I'm an FSU fan, but I watched almost every FSU game because somebody in my family is an FSU fan. <laughs> <laughs> is it I, I knew you have some sort of ties. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, and I saw, I saw Jameis just go in there and, oh, we're 20 points behind? Oh, okay, we'll figure it out. And just lead the team right down the field. So <clears> I, feel, you know, I feel that he's a good player, and I would like to see them take him myself. Mm -hmm. Now, are you at all concerned about the off-the-field issues? I'm not. I'm not because we all we have to remember. Even though he's a young, uh, he's a young man. He is still there. Is still some kid in you when you were in college. You do silly things. You do stupid things. Um, my husband and I were just discussing that uh, rape allegation and all that kind of stuff. And I guess there's some show that's bringing all of that, all of that into it, trying to tell a little bit about what happened. And um, of course, we never have known the real truth or whatever. But evidently. There's a lot of uh, just, uh, I don't know, whatever may have happened, may have happened, but there was no evidence, in other words, that really carried over. Otherwise, he would have been charged with something. Um, the off-the-field stuff, um, I know that there's a lot of good players that have done some silly things in their life. But, so I'm not. I, I just ignore it, and I just I think he's going to grow up, and hopefully, you know, we'll find out when he's exposed to the real world with all that money if he can control <laughs> those you know, impulses that he has. Well, let me ask you this. And he gave a great. He also gave a great interview. You know, mm -hmm. at the combine. I mean, that, I I listened to all of that, and I was impressed with his uh, poise. Well, let me ask you this: What if he had been charged, and um, you know, there were um, there there was still a, there is still a pending federal investigation. But what if he had been charged? How would you feel? Um, Just curious. If he was charged, I have mixed feelings because convicted one thing, charged another. Um, I'm not so sure. I think I probably would have to have second thoughts if he's actually charged because that means that uh, you know the police and the prosecutors feel there's enough evidence you know to do something. Okay. So I I might have some second right. thoughts about that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the quarterback situation is, is big for them, though. They've got to do something there. Where, did you feel like Mike Glennon got a little bit of a raw deal? No, I don't. I was there the whole time Mike Glennon came in. I feel bad for him in a sense because um, he was just thrown in there as a rookie under Shiano. Yeah. And he, he, him and... You know, McCown, all of them have not had an offensive line to protect them. That's true. I think that I think that Glennon is talented. I'm just not sure how much. You know, yeah. I, I can't judge that yet. Um, but I think we'll probably keep him as a as a backup. Um, right. Although they we've heard rumors about him going as a third round trade or or us getting a third round pick for you know trading him. But <coughs> right now we have nobody else, so you know we've got to keep him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Now, how do you like Mike Evans? How do you think he did this year for the team? Oh, my gosh. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think if um, – I can't think of the guy's name that did the one-hand catch. If you say Odell that, Beckham Jr. Odell, yes, Beckham. Odell Beckham. Hatton made that one-hand catch. I think Mike would have been really in there um, for that rookie of the year. You know, I was mm -hmm. impressed with him. I thought he was really good. I think Odell Beckham certainly was better. But mm -hmm. um, I think that one-handed catch, catch pushed him over the edge as far as voting. And, um, yeah. and Mike was really good. Mike gave us some uh, a lot of uh, you know yardage when we didn't have it before. Mike, I, I'm a big, big, big fan, and mm -hmm. um, and I agree. Odell Beckham Jr. is flashy and 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 can make those acrobatic catches, but 
Mike's going to be a very, very good wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a long, long time. As long as he can stay mm -hmm. healthy, I truly believe that. I thought that that was a, an excellent pick for them. Yeah, and he came, he went up, and I've seen so many catches that, you know, the spot where only he could catch it, and mm -hmm. maybe sometimes when no one thought he would catch it, he did. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been impressed with him a lot. Now, now Tampa Bay signed during the off season last year one of my favorite former Titans in um, Alteron Werner. How would you assess his first year performance with you guys? Well, I was really excited about having Alteron Werner on the team. Um, I think he ended up with making a slow start, but I think a lot of that has to do with the system. Yeah. And also, he also had a hamstring. That's kind of hard yeah, to. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, actually, a lot of our, you know, some of our defensive guys didn't pan out, as they say. And I think in the beginning, halfway through, I thought, wow, where is he? I haven't seen him. <laughs> but then as I started really trying to pay attention to him more and more, I started seeing him get in there, getting an interception. And then actually listening to him the other day, I think uh, he would admit that he wasn't as good, you know, because of the system alone. Mm -hmm. I think it was that. But now that he's learning that system and getting in there and doing that stuff, I think he'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I think he's a good player. Really good player. <laughs> and, um, Joe and I'm McCoy. a defensive person, so. Yes, you are a defensive awesome. person. That's good. <laughs> and then Mr. McCoy, Roman back there as well, I think, oh, yeah. also kind of helps solidify things. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that in yeah, this upcoming maybe year, we should take uh, and Dominic and Sue, and we'd have two. Well, there guys. you go. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. Really good. I was about to say, if if you know mm -hmm. the price is right, I think that could very well happen. And yeah. you've got a pretty mm -hmm. good Tampa Bay defensive team. And then you know, if for instance they do draft Jameis Winston, and he does just you know continue his winning ways, mm -hmm. wow! Yeah. <laughs> All he does is win. Win, win, win. Hey, Kat, let's get Kat in here and let her weigh in on, uh, as an outsider looking in, NFC South, uh, very tough division, has traditionally been a very tough division, kind of down um, this past year, but from the outside looking in, Kat, um, were the Saints at all scared about Josh McCown or Mike Glennon? I mean, I think the, the Saints... We're kind of defensively, maybe we should have been a, a, at some scared of any team. <laughs> I think any team had the potential to beat the Saints this year uh, with sloppy defense. And I wasn't particularly. I think next year, Jameis Winston, I will certainly be a lot, a lot more scared of. And I think, um, no offense to McCown, I think uh, he's not the better choice of the backup option. And uh, right. I'm not anymore. Obviously, not anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but a backup for Jameis Winston, you know, you have a you have you have a good choice there, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it wasn't all it wasn't all Josh McCown's fault, but no, definitely sure. uh, was not pretty. Uh, you no. know, it, it it was not pretty. Mm -hmm. I said the Bills. I'm sorry, he's with the Browns. Right. Um, yes, exactly. he's with the yeah. Browns. That's right. Yeah. I tell you what, they paid him a lot of money for yeah. for Mitch, for his abilities, as far as I yeah, was they did. I, yeah, yeah, I thought they paid too mm -hmm. much. Truth yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but he, um, I agree with you. It was not all his fault. Um, no. I mean, he hadn't, didn't have time to breathe a lot of time. He really got hurt the last two or three games too, and it was kind of sad to watch that. But yeah. you know, it's, I mean, it, it is what it is. But he just hung in there. I, I really admire that and I respect that about him. <laughs> yeah, Tampa's got to address their offensive line. There's absolutely no question um, because even if they do draft Jameis Winston, um, no no quarterback is going to be um, fantastic behind behind it. <clears throat> you know, they made that trade that was um, really kind of a, a bust trade for them, and so exactly. <laughs> I think you'll expect to see that. I think Cat can can speak to that. New Orleans knew that they had an issue. They've really um, started putting some resources into their offensive line. And it's, it's gotten somewhat better. Still some work mm -hmm. needs to be done there, too. Yeah. 
But you gotta have it all. It all starts in the trenches, right, lady? No, yes, ma'am. Ma yes, it ma'am. It all starts in the trenches because then you know you can protect the quarterback. That helps improve your running game. So Absolutely. yeah, it all starts in the trenches. Yeah, and then you can use the two threats: the run and the pass. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And speaking of the run, speaking of the run, what's Doug Martin's future? Um, I think Doug's going to be here. Doug has been hurt. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when Shiano was here, he kind of ran him in, into the ground, and he ended up getting hurt, and he really hasn't recovered. And I think mm -hmm. last this past year, Lovey was doing some experimentation you know, with some of the other running backs. That's why you didn't see Doug as much, plus the fact that he was still maybe hurt a little bit that they didn't really want to own up to. But I think he's okay. I think he'll end up staying. He had a lot of ankle injuries, isn't that? Wasn't that it? Like ankle yeah, knees? That was, yeah, that was an ankle injury. This this uh, last one that seemed to last like you know a year. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I yeah. did sprain my ankle once. Granted, I was not a football player, but it, it did <laughs> it did nag me for quite a while. I was an ice skater, and it really yeah, and, and Lovey really told us. <laughs> <laughs> Lovey told us in the beginning of the year you know, that he wanted to be a running team. So. You know, we kept waiting for that to emerge, but um, because of that line, it could not. And I was like, can anybody block, please? <laughs> <laughs> and Leslie Frazier, are you guys happy with him down there? Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I, I think he's okay. I think he's going to be staying. You know, I don't think mm -hmm. there's any turnover in that respect. I think um, where the Bucks have really done well as far as getting talent was when we got Levante David. Um, he is an awesome, awesome player. He really is. Um, I mean, he is like, uh, they always say it's like Derek Brooks reincarnated, you know, 10 years after Derek's gone, you know, well, not that quite, quite that long, five years <laughs> gone. Yeah. But um, he is, I mean, he is a great player. That kid just shows up from nowhere, and he's in on the tackle no matter, no matter where it is on the field. He's a, he's a really great player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are the, are the Bucks going to be able to trade Anthony Collins? God, I hope so. <laughs> There's a sucker born every day. Uh, yes, Michael Johnson and Anthony Collins have been the biggest disappointments for the Buccaneers. And um, I, it was, what's ironic is um, that I, when Michael Johnson was signed, um, I heard a guy on the radio saying, look, I'm from the Bengals. I'm a Bengals fan. And you guys don't know, but Michael Johnson is not as good as you think. And lo and behold, a year later, that guy on the radio was exactly right. He really was. <laughs> Show my, 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 from what I'm getting is that he's more of a plug-in guy. You know, if they're going to play, um, you know, they're going to do the rotation thing as opposed to being a constant starter. But I will say in his defense, he was hurt. And, yeah. he, you know, he really couldn't do much because of that. But um, I, I'm, I think they're going to keep him. I don't know. That's a lot of money, though. But. Oh, I think I, I think they're going to keep Michael Johnson. Yeah. He definitely was to rotate the the Bengals. That's one of the things that they were, they are so good and brilliant about is finding guys for that defensive line and rotating them in and out. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and it looks like they're kind of good at knowing when to let a guy go and when you know. So, yeah. Uh, I, I think, think he can rebound, and we'll see what he does next year. Yeah, I think another big disappointment for the Bucks fans was Logan, Logan Mankins that oh, he got yes. from the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, seriously, from the look on that man's face, from the day he showed up on, you know, at, at One Buck Place, he never looked like he was happy to be there, and his play really showed it. Um, mm -hmm. They are keeping him. They announced that they're going to keep him and everything. I'm just hoping that maybe his attitude changes because I really felt like he didn't want to be there, and what really you know, hurt was that the Patriots did win a Super Bowl. Yeah. You know? yeah. And um, but you know, the way I feel about it is he had no con. I guess he had some control over. If he had taken less money, maybe they would have kept him. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, I, they, hope, I hope that he's happier. You know, with Florida sunshine, maybe that'll do something. I was about to say, I think the Florida sunshine might help a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was an odd trade too. I was I really liked Tim Wright, um, uh, so uh, I, I, I had I had concerns about that trade. Now they did the Bucks did draft a tight end who I think is going to be very good. His name escapes me. Jan, what is? Do you remember? Uh, is uh, 
Aust Austarian Jenkins. I can't think of his yeah. first name. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's good. Um, he's made a few little mistakes. He's finding out that in the NFL you got to hang on to the ball. Mm -hmm. Just and, look at um, Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> on like the two-yard line. We, one of those five or six games that we lost in the fourth quarter, he personally was responsible for one of those. But he's a, he was a rookie and he was young, and, you know, that's okay. I mean, you're going to make those mistakes, and that's that's how he learns. But mm -hmm. I, I wanted to say something about Tim Wright. Didn't, okay. the Patri didn't the Patriots take him as a tight end? Yes. Okay. Yeah. He, he really was not a true tight end. He actually conformed to that position under Shiano. Yeah. He and was a wide receiver. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but and I liked him personally. He was a very nice person. I had mm -hmm. met him like off the field. And so when he got traded and they won the Super Bowl, I was like so happy for him because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah, went yeah, from the yeah. worst to first. <laughs> That's yeah, so cool. Happy for him. For him. Yeah. Although he didn't like you know play in the Super Bowl itself, but he did help win a few games. Yeah, I mean that's the weird thing about the Patriots. Um, sp you know, speaking of plug and play, they can definitely kind plug of and play with the best play. of them. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's turn to the Saints. We, we sort of touched upon a little bit of of what's been going on, but um, let's get Cat in here. Talk about the Saints, girl. Let me tell you something. I was all over the Saints. I was predicting that they were going to win. Yep. That vision. Oh. What in the world happened? I I mean, when you look at the beginning, when you look at preseason, you look at our uh, off season moves. You think to yourselves like. <laughs> Damn, this is a Super Bowl contender. Yeah, this right? Is, exactly. This is, like, we have ourselves, uh, you know, we're going to finally get the second Super Bowl. But I had a bad feeling just from the Jimmy Graham negotiation. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, when you have that sort of uh, negative energy, mm -hmm. it starts to swirl around a team. And, I mean, the fact they had to go, you know, they had to make it legal over, is he a wide receiver? Is he a tight end? I mean... Mm -hmm. Well, quite frankly, don't. What's in his Twitter bio? <gasps> oh, <laughs> who is his? Who is his manager? <laughs> who is his agent? Who at his agency is looking at looking at his social media and being like, <clears throat> take tight end off, take tight end exactly. off. Exactly. Um, it got, but then it just kind of like, I mean, where where do you even start with where we fell apart? I mean, it took until week nine to win on the road. After we won on the road, we didn't win at home for the rest of the mm -hmm. season. We've dropped three in a row, I think, for the first at home for the first time, I think, since 2008 or it's either 2007, 2008. So it's been a long time since we've dropped. Everyone talks about the home team advantage with the dome. Right. You have that loud crowd noise. You have the city of New Orleans. Everyone knows is crazy about their team. Right, it's, it's, it's a Houdat nation. Mm -hmm. it's the Houdat nation. It's a it's a religion down there. It's, so it's a uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you what the Saints just killed the Bucks every time we go there. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. I mean, it's like okay, they count that as a loss. I mean, that's the way it's been, you know. So mm -hmm. you know how you know it's hard when you don't aren't able to do those things. It is, and then you you look at you look at it. We had four Pro Bowlers. Not, I stand by my point that I don't think Drew Brees or Jimmy Graham deserved that, and I know they were all. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you have. Yeah. You have Drew Brees, which I it. He was my fantasy quarterback, and he let me down a little bit. I, I, I hate to say it, he let me down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to ask Cat this, Cat. Um, do they have the successor to Drew, Drew Brees on the roster? No, I mean we have. They've, they've got to do something, don't they? We, I mean, right now we have. I always mix up. I know it's Josh McCown, Luke McCown, his brother. I'm always like, <laughs> yes. what is your, I don't even remember Those his first McCowns name. have been all over the place. I mean, all over the place, baby. I mean, I think we're team number six. That that doesn't. Lucky look. number six. It's okay. I mean, and then Ryan Griffin. I. I what I've heard what you kind of see in the the Twitter sphere the the potential of drafting a third rounder. Mm -hmm. I think you know, you know we find the Saints are one of the best teams. I think I would say at finding a gem in the draft that no one else would really. Mm -hmm. like Jimmy Graham, not this mm -hmm. season, not this mm -hmm. season, but Jimmy Graham, uh, Marcus Colston, I think was a sixth rounder. I think Meacham was a seventh rounder. Like we do find them, so maybe. And if they have a year or two to kind of have Breeze's tutelage. Mm -hmm. Was it Kyrie, 
Kyrie Davis was in there. They find undrafted free agent running backs like left, right, left, right. Yeah, I mean, whoever I mean, our scouting office is is crazy good at finding those those players who everyone else you know overlooks. But so hopefully in the third round, I don't I don't think we have more than two seasons with Breeze. Quite frankly, I don't yeah. I don't think he has it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that they've got to. They've if they're not, and I couldn't remember his name. Thank you for. Um, Throwing it out there, Ryan Griffin. If they either he's the the guy or not, they've got to decide. Yeah, and so far they've been they haven't really decided that yet. And if we do draft a quarterback, we know probably McCown because that seems to be his career path will probably be the one we release. We can't carry <laughs> three three quarterbacks or four quarterbacks. That's <laughs> that's insane. That's a little bit excessive. Just a yeah, bit. <laughs> particularly we know unless Drew Brees is injured. He is not giving up the field. Like mm -hmm. that that's a guy who will play until the end when you're like, sit down, the game's over. Buddy, the game's over. Go to the bench. Go to the bench. <laughs> Come on. Come on. But but no. I gotta <laughs> he's, he's gotta I mean I love that about him. He is a yeah. fighter. Yeah, but, no, you want a competitor. You want that fighter. You do. Yeah. You do want that fighter. And that's a yeah. good thing to have. Um, what happened with New Orleans defense this year too? Just where where did that go? <laughs> Uh, um, I wish we could find them on a map. They <laughs> don't currently exist. <laughs> um, honestly, depth was a big issue to start with. We had injuries left, right, and center. By the end of the season, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't even remember their names, and I wrote about them. I wrote specifically about them in an article. There were two <laughs> guys that we picked up randomly that I was like, whoa, who is this guy, and why are you playing? But you're playing well. <laughs> So you can stay. <laughs> you, can, you can stay if you want to stay. Exactly. It's, it's a tough one. You you go from having one of the best defenses in the league to once again having the worst. And you just have to wonder. You, you saw the tension between uh, Peyton and Rob Ryan, and we don't we don't know what's going on there. but It's weird. That's a very weird dynamic. I was very surprised he made it through the uh, Black Monday. I thought he was for sure going to get get fired like I, I probably if I was a gambler would have put money on it but you know you see about a, Sean Payton or no 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 Rob Sean Ryan, Ryan. Rob Ryan. Ryan. I, think, I think Sean Payton delivers up a couple more seasons like this I don't see him sticking around too long mm -mm. I think mm -hmm. Benson Gates has kind of proven that yeah <laughs> I mean it's 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 a not for long league what have you That's done for exactly me lately right. mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. I, I think probably I mean the thing is that a, a lot of people and I myself I have trouble admitting it that Sean Payton and Drew Brees are probably going to maybe outstay their welcome a little because, let's face it, without the Saints, New Orleans, New Orleans needed the Saints after Katrina. And oh, yes. They, right. they won totally. us that Super Bowl. And I think they're going to have a little bit of breathing room. But Rob Ryan? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there wasn't anyone out there that Sean Payton thought, all right, this is his replacement. You know, we did have a great season with him in 2013. Yeah. Let's let's mm -hmm. see what happens. Well, one one thing that scares me for the Saints is that I, aren't they over the cap too quite a bit now, or unless they release some people? I know they. I think didn't they release Meacham? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Meacham probably. We're still close to it. I think 20 million over or something like that. Yeah. So I was crazy. reading. I was reading that. I was like, whoa! I didn't realize that. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's it's a lot. I mean, Loomis. Loomis, he's a. I, I'm hoping the big hope that you know you you you've heard that this is a want, but not anything concrete. Is that Breeze will renegotiate? But I mean, after looking at how hard he fought for that contract, I'm not sure that he will. Uh, I think Jari Evans, uh, Jari Evans should probably renegotiate. Hopefully, that's one of the big things. Uh, but you're right, we have a lot of we have a lot of players who are due big payouts. This There's a lot season. of talk about Junior Gallette that um, the Saints may not be very happy with him when you consider his arrest and all of that. Yeah, he's he's a he's a big paycheck, and I know the charges were dropped, but uh, I think that might be that might kind of be an issue. You you do see the Saints not being huge fans of off the field issues with personnel, so I'd be. Uh, I don't want him going to the Falcons, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to go back to your thing Whoa. about the defensive coordinator and ask you about this. Do you think that Sean Payton, in, in the back of, of his mind, was like, I've had such a revolving door at the defensive coordinator position. We've got to get a system in place and trust that the process is right. 
I think you know what I think. I think that is the case. I, after Bounty Gate, the Saints' mm -hmm. defense. I mean, we need we need to get some stability in there. And he did have a great season just the year before. And yeah, if we can bulk up at cornerback, I think particularly cornerback safety. Those are our big. We need to bulk out the depth there. Yeah. Hey, what mm -hmm. happened to Kenny Vaccaro? I sophomore slump maybe I an injury and that, I mean that was another shocker like you look at it and you think to yourself oh man he's had a fantastic rookie season this is gonna be mm -hmm. and then I think I do think sophomore slump happened he he was injured I think wasn't he, he like was. around yeah. week thirteen or so mm -hmm. yeah yeah he got it. safety play was down across the league he was not the only and no. not the only young look look at Matt Elam in um in yeah. Baltimore a lot mm -hmm. of young safeties really struggled it was it was a big year for that and I think I think a big thing you saw was just a lack of communication with the defense you saw. I don't know if that was a lack of amongst themselves, a lack of trust amongst themselves. It was just we did have a young defense that kind of needed, you know, we kind of needed that more senior guy to take over and be like, come on, guys, stick together on this one because you're just in sloppy plays. You, I think a little sometimes arrogance when you look at how many games we lost by a point, two points, overtime, like... I think I counted. There were five games that were so close to being wins, but yeah, there was no way they should have lost that Detroit game. But I was wow. glad they did. <laughs> My girl Sonia had to bring that one up. I know, right? That's hard. <laughs> the one of you guys held Jimmy Graham to no catches, I and know. you kill us in the end. I'm like, no. I went on to go to work that day, and I left with like I think eight minutes left. I was like. Okay, I, it's been nerving. It's been nerve wracking, but I think we got this. I can go to work pretty safely. Exactly. No, I couldn't. No, exactly. And yeah, we were at work watching it, and you know, I'm trying not to, you know, disturb other people, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh man. man, such a good game. Oh, it was a great I day. Digress. Go ahead. <laughs> Hey, no, 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 no. Trash Talk Tuesday, Trash Talk Tuesday. Oh, that's right. Trash Talk Tuesday. That's right. Oh, <laughs> that's Lord. Right. Really um, he was, oh, he, you know, he, he shows some flashes, but he got injured too, didn't he? And um, I think, he, didn't, did he end up on injured reserve? Sorry, my, my computer broke up at the name, so I was oh, going to try to pretend. Your, to your rookie wide receiver, and I'm sorry, his name is escaping oh, me. Oh, Brandon, Brandon Cooks? Cooks. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Brandon he Cooks. Up, I mean, he, I, to be honest, I'm not entirely, like, I wasn't a fan of that pick in general. Um, <laughs> not, not that he's not talented, but that kind of seemed like a position we didn't really need. As no, I agree. Like, yeah. That, to me, was one of those, like, welcome? Yeah, he ended up on IR. <laughs> I, I it was it was an odd pick to me. I don't our first yeah. round pick a wide receiver when we have the depth we have there that did made no sense to me. So I it, I don't see it as a huge loss, quite <laughs> frankly. Um, <laughs> Definitely got numbers there. And Breeze can all uh, Drew Breeze can always find somebody, right? I mean, you look at it, and there are games where he has seven. Well, they just had, and they had just taken Kenny Stills, and that is named the guy from LSU. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so, I'm a, uh, I think yeah, I thought it was odd too. It was yeah. a, definitely a bizarre first round pick, but I mean, if we keep him, we keep him. If we don't, eh. no skin off your nose, huh? Yeah, I'm sure we'll yeah. pick up somebody else in free agency. I'm sure we'll probably draft another wide receiver. That's. I was about to say you're just taking a play from um, Mil Matt Millen's playbook. That's all. You know, draft and, the wide receiver, and draft the wide receiver. Somebody, <laughs> somebody I saw that I think uh, wasn't it Jarius Bird? Wasn't he? I mean, I mm. thought he was supposed to... Jairus to, Bird, yeah. yeah. He got yeah. injured pretty early. Yeah, what happened? Like, I couldn't remember. I knew that he went there, and I was like, wait a minute, I haven't really seen anything of him. I didn't yeah. realize he got hurt. That yeah, he had a bad, a bad back injury, didn't he? Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. that was one of those things where we were like, yes, this is going to be, and then injured, I think, really early on. Oh, I didn't realize mm -hmm. that early. <laughs> no wonder I didn't see him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a disappointment to see that he, you know, got injured early when we really could have used that. And then we uh we picked up we picked up Champ Bailey in off in the off season and then that obviously did not work. And he retired. Yeah. Yeah. So they already released him. Now he's retired. Yeah. yeah. That, 
That we want to touch. We want to touch on the Panthers and the Falcons too. Uh, mm -hmm. But before we, before we move on, let's get you guys' prediction. We know what the Bucks are going to do with their um, number one pick, most likely. Uh, Cal, what do you think the Saints are going to do? Um, I've seen two options. You have um, the cornerback out of Michigan State, Trey, Trey Waynes. I've never heard it said out loud, so I'm guessing yeah, it's Trey Waynes. Trey Waynes. Yeah, Trey Waynes. And then you have Dante Fowler from Florida, who to me, that's the guy we got to go for. I, yeah, I like him too. I like him a lot. My, in my sad little mind, I pray that something happens that Leonard Williams, who is a Trojan, uh, no, 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 falls, no, no, falls no, 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 no. The us. Titans are drafting Leonard Williams. That is not going to happen. You need to get them thoughts out of your mind, girl. I, I, I am a USC alum. I see the big cat, and I'm like, maybe something will happen. It won't. It won't happen. <laughs> but in my heart of hearts, that's Deep down we'll, give you, we'll give you our number two pick. We'll give you the Titans number two pick if you want to move up and take him, honey. Oh, Lord. Yeah. I mean, he is, just... is, is Leonard Williams that kid from uh, USC? Oh, God, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, heard, I, I was driving home tonight, and I heard him on the radio. And they were saying he doesn't even have a driver's license. Yeah, I Did saw you know that, that too. How does he not? Um, that's so awesome. I, was, I know. it was so. It I was, mean, that's really good because he can't do a D. Well, technically, yeah. he could get caught for a DUI, but, you know, hey. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, was <laughs> he could so, pull so, away. Um, so who cool was, was it? Jones, one of the local big-name country music stars got a DUI for riding a, a, I'm pretty sure it was George Jones for riding a lawnmower to the liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like George Jones. <laughs> so he could pull one of those. Uh, he could. He, he could very well do that. I mean, the Titans are getting, oh, they're getting a stud in him. He is, he's ridiculous. He's great. I, I think that that's their pick. I think that that's who they're going to take. I guess we'll see, you know. Um, I think that he's certainly worthy of the, the number two pick. You know, maybe they'll field some trade offers. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's talk, um, before we get to our hot topics, let's talk about the Panthers and the Falcons. All right, so Falcons, they got a new coach this year, and they've made some moves. They, you know, got rid of who, Stevie Jackson. Mm -hmm. I always get, yeah, mm -hmm. I always get Stevie's mixed up <laughs> with him <laughs> with him and the wide receiver out of um, San Francisco. I always get those guys mixed up. But, you know, I was really kind of excited that the Falcons got um, Dan Quinn because, of course, that means that Terrell Austin stays in Detroit. So, once again, I'm selfish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, last year once again, just disappointing for them. You know, you thought that they were actually going to be able to at least make something happen, make some noise, at least you know, be above five hundred. But yeah. I don't know. You know, yeah, I, I don't, don't know, know what happened. I don't yeah. know really. I think it was uh, coach just wore wore at his welcome, and I think yeah. that's what ended up happening. Um, what I was surprised is um, Kyle Shanahan is the offensive coordinator now under yes. Quinn. Yeah, I, yeah. I was really surprised at that. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think you have Matt Ryan there. He's Matty Ice. He deserves the name, I think. <laughs> I, I think you just got to – I think they can always be a contender if they can pull – I mean, I hate saying this. I think I think they always have a chance as long as they make some decent moves in in the off season and the draft. They're they have a solid QB, and for me, that's what matters most. Yeah, and they got Rod, they got Roddy White, Julio. You know, I mean, those are like yeah, um, you know, just you know, the mainstays. I was exactly. surprised though that they. Uh, I think I saw where they released. Um, was it is it Harry Douglas? Yeah, Harry he Douglas. was like a he was like a sleeper, you know. I thought yeah. he, yeah, he I always pounded the bucks. He always heard the yeah. bucks. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. How did I miss that? Yeah, and they I, released I, him. Um, you know, they've got the yeah. they've got options at running back. They're um, they still have um, Anton Smith and um, yeah. Jaquez Rogers and who, I was about to say I thought they got rid of Jaquez, but I guess they did not. Okay. okay. Yeah. And De Devontae that. Freeman. They, they released uh, Jonathan Massacoy, maybe. Yeah, the maybe Titans picked him up. The Titans put a, claim, oh, a waiver did. claim. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw that. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah I, for the Falcons, and, and, and you could uh, rinse and repeat this, what I'm, this comment from the last few years, they've just absolutely got to address their lines. 
Yes. And, mm-hmm. um, and Dan Quinn knows that. He's yeah. a smart guy, and he comes from that uh, mentality. And I think that they will, that that's, um, that's going to be uh, the number one priority for them, and, and I think that they'll, they will get it done. I wasn't all that surprised about Harry Douglas. Um, he the the contract, you know, and they can still bring him back. I mean, yeah. um, mm-hmm. a lot of these guys will test free agency, and um, you know, maybe maybe not might get more reasonable about what their old teams were were proposing or what have you. And I don't know whether there had been any talks between the Falcons and, and him or not. But you know, he's a guy. He's not going to stay on the, the market. Too. But, you know, there are a lot of wide receivers um, already out there and, and even more getting ready to, to hit the market. So it's going to be an interesting market. And there's um, it's a heavy draft for wide receivers. I was about to too, say, so. and they got a whole bunch coming out. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting to see what they do. And, you know, I think that they will start that whole build through the draft philosophy too, Absolutely. more so. Mm-hmm. I think so, because that's just kind of how they do it in Seattle, how mm-hmm. Gus Bradley's done it in Jacksonville. So I think that, you know, that's what they'll probably end up doing to start to more Absolutely. draft and kind of build up their program that way. Well, speaking of wide receivers, let's talk about the Panthers. <laughs> 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 oh goodness, the wide receiverless Panthers. I mean, they kind of won the, divi- the division by default, right? Because yeah. you know, yeah. no team was. I um, mean, seven and eight record. Come on, I mean, seven, eight, and one. Crazy. And one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a seven, eight, and one. I know New Orleans was at seven and nine, but just by the hair of their chinny chin chin, they won it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, quite frankly, did an NFC South team deserve a playoff spot this uh, year? No, I mean, they did yeah. not. No. Honestly, no. no. <laughs> Let, let's be real. They No NFC South team. <laughs> Seven, eight, and one, that's it's not a playoff record. That's uh-huh. just crazy, man. No, I it's know. Just, it's, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah. Uh, but they but big ups to them. First team to repeat ever. Um, since the uh, inception of the NFC South, so you got to give it up to yeah, them. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You do. You do. Yeah. You do. You I, to used to, I used to be a Panther hater, um, like five years ago, and then slowly I started looking at some of the players and and saw some of the things they did off the field, and I thought, oh, they're I'll quit being a hater. You know, <laughs> I'll start liking them more. And I actually won tickets to go watch the Bucks play the Panthers at the Panthers. Oh, oh my cool. God. awesome! I, it was awesome. I'm not kidding you. Those are the nicest fans and the nicest people I have ever seen. Wow, that's from great. The day so we, cool. From the time yeah. we stepped off that plane and, and got to that stadium, everybody was so nice. And I mean, I looked, I looked at my husband. I was like, Oh my gosh, we our fans are so bad compared to these. <laughs> they, were, I mean, they were just nice people, and and we enjoyed the game. And of course, the Bucks lost, but still. Okay, it's okay. There, oh, that's awesome to hear. That's the fans. Yeah, just yeah. nice people, and and even we got to go down on the field, so we saw some of the players and everything, and even oh, they wow. were you know super nice. Like we were trying to take some pictures of some Bucks fans, you know, from mm-hmm. the field looking up, and and they would like jump over, you know, like oh we're gonna get in this, you know, just oh, that's so cool. So that's that's fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, they were they were really nice. So. Oh. Um, I'm, I wasn't surprised, though. Um, some people say they thought that uh, Coach would lose his job, you know, because they weren't as impressive as they should have been for, you know, uh, uh, an FC South champ. But mm-hmm. um, I just think it boils down to those same old things that they need, and, and I don't know how many years the owner's going to give the guy to, yeah. to get those pieces. You know, he's yeah. had a few years to get those few pieces, and he just hasn't been able to do it. So I, I hope they do well, though. I think they're going to be a pretty good team. Yeah, they've um, you know they've got some holes. They they need another wide, at least one yeah, more. Yeah, at least one more. <laughs> one more wide receiver, Kelvin Benjamin. Um, yeah, was was a good pick for them. He's mm-hmm. um uh, in, on one of my dynasty leagues in in one of my on my team in one of my dynasty leagues. So um. A really good, good first year for him. They they've got to get him help. Um, D'Angelo Williams is gone. You know they've uh, the running back position. They're going to have to address that. There's absolutely no question. At some point, I don't think mm-hmm. that, that they will go running back um, all that early. But um, what do you think that they what 
and I haven't looked. I, I assume that they have a first round pick. What do you think? What do, what do you ladies think they'll do? You know, I was thinking. I, I was thinking running back. I don't know if they will go first round with a running back because you know there is depth this year at that position. So I think they'll yeah. still be able to get a pretty good guy. But maybe you know another wide receiver for sure. I think because once again, got a great wide receiver class. So I think yeah. you know that will be one thing that they'll address. Possibly their defense. Luke Keekley has been a monster back there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they did release Greg Hardy, so they are going to have to look at addressing some of those things. So I think those are probably their biggest needs. Absolutely. They've got to get a left tackle, too. I, I was, was going to say the same thing, so that yeah. Cam doesn't have to keep pulling out and doing his run action. They've got to have somebody to give him enough time to, you know, throw it down the field. Yeah, there's no point in having a great wide receiver if there's no time to pass, Again, you know. Exactly. So. Exactly. I think I'd probably go tackle and then address wide receiver, running back. Like you said, there's there's a lot coming out later mm -hmm. in the draft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with Kat. I think that's the way I would go too. Yeah, they're kind of in the position, a similar position to where they were last year. Yeah. You know, they can mm -hmm. sit back and let a good player fall to them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and not have to, to worry about it. Uh, quick prediction. Um, feel free to go all fan on us. <laughs> Who's going to win the division this next year and why? Kat, we'll start with you. Oh, man, you know what? I hate to say it. I, I got to go Saints, obviously. Of course. Of mm -hmm. course. Of course. I think, yeah, I man. think we have front office magic, and I think if we can just whatever fix that to, you know rift between Rob Ryan and Sean Payton and get our defense back on track, we're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. All right, Jan. <laughs> okay, I'd like to say that the Buccaneers could. They could, but they <laughs> will not. Together. Okay, they will not. Uh, I'm going to pick the Panthers again because I don't think they have as many holes to fill as the rest of the teams. True. And I, I really like uh, the Saints, but I'm still worried about that um, defense. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I don't. I think there's too many holes that they can. You know. They're not going to be able to fill in just this one one time. So I guess the more rounded team to me is the Panthers. That's probably very valid. Where do you think valid. the Bucks are going to finish, Jan? Do you think that they'll um, certainly they you, you think that they're going to do better than two and fourteen, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you want my prediction now? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, if you want. Um, I think they'll probably go eight and eight. I think they can do that. Um. I thought that they could do eight and eight this past year, and truthfully, because we lost, you know, four or five games in the fourth quarter, um, yeah, some of those games you could have, we could have just flipped a coin, you know. But yeah. um, I, I think we're going to be a lot better this year. But um, competition is, you know, pretty tough. Yeah. Although they're telling us that we have one of the weakest schedules, and I'm like, hallelujah, thank you for something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we'll probably go about eight and eight, um, and I think we might come in. Um, Second or third. I don't think we'll be. I think we can beat the Falcons out. So you think the Falcons are going to finish last in the division? I yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. And I think it'll be us or the Saints in second and third. All right. And I, like I, it. I mean, that's what, at least that's the hierarchy I would put it. Yeah. I, I think that's completely that. possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you're probably not too far off. I'd, li I'd like to hope that we're going to do a little bit better. I think than the Panthers, but you're right. I think it really they are the better rounded team and. Uh, I think it will be a toss-up for second and third between the Bucks and the Saints, depending how this offseason goes, in all not-biasedness. <laughs> <laughs> we love us some bias here. We're all about yes, that bias. Thank you. We are <laughs> all about that bias. All right, <laughs> let's move into hot topics, and um, we'll let Sonia lead us. Our oh, leader, Sonia. Okay. I, I take me to your leader. Um, so big trade went down today, just straight up. Kiko Alonso um, going from the Bills to <laughs> to the Philadelphia Eagles, and um, Lashawn McCoy coming over to the Buffalo Bills. What do you guys think? I mean, that pretty much just broke a couple hours ago. Yeah. I was kind of shocked. 
kind of kind of surprised to see that go down. Um, you know, LaShawn McCoy does bring an excellent, excellent running game to the Bills, which is something that they, you know, so desperately need. <laughs> um, not, you know, not desperately, I should say, but, you know, Fred Jackson did do very well, I think. He was serviceable last year. He did have a couple of injuries. And so I think LaShawn McCoy is really going to help round out that um, run game. But, again, quarterback situation is my main concern there. Hopefully EJ Manuel does get to get it together, but you know, I think I surprising, but I think the Bills did very well, I think, with that trade. What do you Absolutely. guys Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Go ahead, Kat. You can tell us what you feel. <laughs> I honestly it was one of those things I, I don't remember who one of you tweeted I honestly don't remember who it was because I when I saw the the trade I was like what what Tra what? Huh? <laughs> that trade makes no sense to me. But mm. I mean, there must be something about you know Alonzo that we none of us know that uh, <laughs> Chip Kelly does because I'm, I'm not I don't know anything about this guy. I know La Lashawn McCoy though. That's that's Lashawn McCoy. That's yeah, he's yeah. A big name. That's shady. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a big trade off to me that mm. I I don't understand at all. Kiko Alonso is a former Oregon Duck. Uh, Chip Kelly coached him at Oregon. Um, very, very, very promising young defensive player who's not completed a season. He got injured um, the last two years. Last season, I think, in the preseason. I was about to say, was it preseason or very early on? I do remember that. Very early on. Yeah. So, um, but the talent is there. Um, uh, he's a a young, exciting player. My take is the Eagles did not want to absorb Shady McCoy's contract. He's due somewhere between ten and eleven million um, this year, and fairly similar. I think he's got two or three more years left on his deal. It's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> um, they. Uh, can get value right now, and Kiko, they need uh, linebackers. Linebacker is a position that the, the Eagles um, are definitely struggling with. They're going to release, um, well, they have released or are going to release Trent Cole, and um, there's another guy that they're going to move on. They've got to, they've got to build. I think if we've seen anything... Chip Kelly has that magic to be able to plug guys in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, do, you, do you think that that system, I mean, I don't know, I just, it seems to me like at some point after another year or so that they're going to figure out how to defend it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. you know? I guess we'll see. Yeah, I mean, either this trade is mm -hmm. going to end up being brilliant or it's going to end up looking... Um, kind of dumb. So I guess I, you know, I guess that we'll see. Yeah. Um, uh, for for Lashawn McCoy, I mean, the Bills better do something about their offensive line. Yeah. Um, because I don't care, and we're I think we're seeing a common theme here mm -hmm. uh, about teams that have you know kind of struggled, especially offensively. Their offensive lines haven't been very good. Yeah, absolutely. Right. That's right. So yeah, I think this is in a way kind of a make or break deal for Chip Kelly and his whole regime because, you know, I think this could be, if it doesn't work out very well, I think that this could kind of be the start of the end. You know what I'm saying? I know it's kind yeah. of down the road, but if this doesn't work out well and kind of ends up blowing up in their face, I think that the Chip Kelly experiment will be over a lot faster than a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. Down, here, down mm -hmm. here there's been all kinds of rumors about him trying to trade up so he could get Mariota. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The duck, yeah. You know the duck clan syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe the Titans can sell that number two pick to um. To, but I, I think once you get past the Titans, then you've got well the Jets are I mean, are they set at quarterback or not? Then the you know Eli. I mean, there are a number of teams that. <clears throat> While they may have quarterbacks, you know, Eli Manning in, in New York, mm -hmm. there's no clear successor. And yeah. so you could have some interest there. And I, and I do think uh, Mariota is a guy that a lot of teams will be interested in and trying to, you know, maybe get him and let him sit. And if, you know, like New York, I mean, look at New York. Eli is going to be the starter. There would be no pressure. Um, yeah. 
from yep. their perspective, maybe a fan pressure, you know, if, if Eli continues to stink it up. But you know, <laughs> so it, it, it's it's going to be interesting, I think, to see how how those first ten picks go down. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> As always. Um, that was my main hot topic. We can kind of touch on my other hot topic if you'd like. The Des Bryant non-video? Yes. <laughs> you know, I honestly, in this day and age, I do believe that, that video was just made up, and I think that is absolutely awful if that is the case, mm -hmm. because that's just all the way wrong. I mean, that that's beyond wrong. You don't do that. I mean, and I hate to say this because I don't really call TMZ legit, but yeah. if TMZ doesn't even have it, really, I, I have a hard time believing that there really even was a video. Yeah, and you can't tell me that one of these websites <laughs> couldn't get their hands on it. Exactly. I particularly, that is like gold in the TMZ mm -hmm. vault if that exists. And nobody's going <laughs> to sit on that. Nobody no. mm -mm. is going to sit on that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not at all. So... That's that was awful. That was, that was absolutely awful. I agree. I, I hope that that didn't, you know, I mean, obviously it did, I think, have some kind of effect on Des getting that longer-term deal with the Cowboys, which is, once again, abs you don't mess with anybody's money. Granted, yes, everybody is a millionaire, but still you don't hurt somebody's income-making potential, mm -hmm. and I think that's yeah. what, what that's happened, good. and that's awful. Mm -hmm. it's, it is <laughs> awful. I agree. And, 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 and of course, I don't know if 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 Cat and Jan know this. I know my girl Sonia knows this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from someone who has survived domestic violence, which is the word that I hate, um, it is horrible to use that as a bargaining tool. Exactly. It's horrible to use the pain yeah. of victims as as a means to take money away from a man, especially. I mean, this thing was being promoted like a mixtape. Yeah, I, it was that sort of weird yes. voyeurism. Yes, it was. That yes, it was. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 you've seen, there are too many legitimate cases of this sort of happening, and there's too much that it actually needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. To just use it as a tool to screw over yeah, somebody. Yeah, it's it was it was awful. I agree, it yeah. was awful, and um, hopefully we'll do better. Yeah, we gotta do better. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the hour always goes by fast. Yeah, so, fast. So, fast. Yeah, so fast. So so fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you so so much, Cat and Jan, for joining us tonight. This was so much fun. I'm so glad that we guys we got you guys on. Trust me, we're gonna have Trash Talk Tuesdays coming up soon. <laughs> oh boy. So, <laughs> so we're gonna have to have Cat on with some um, of our Falcons fans Woo! so that we can get some real good <laughs> smack <laughs> talk going on. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell everybody once again, Cat, where we can find you? At K Lash Williams. So, mm -hmm. Clash Williams. Very, very good. And are you writing anything, got anything coming out soon for NFL Female? I am finishing up my touches on my piece on Thomas Morstead, our punter, who I think is one of the best examples of the sort of player and sort of man the NFL should pay a little more attention Aww. to. I can't punters wait to are read it. Too, people, punters are people too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they are people too. <laughs> exactly. Very, very good. And Jan, thank you so much for coming to join us as well. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I can't wait to have you back. We got to talk after the draft to see if you know the Bucks did get Mr. Winston and see you know how it's gonna go. How you feel about it? So thanks again for joining us. You're welcome. Um, you want to tell us once again where we can find you? Yeah, on Twitter you can find me at at Hignite. It's P I G N I T E. All right, very good. And do you have anything coming out anytime oh, soon? Oh my goodness, NFL I haven't enough? written in so long. I, <laughs> Thomas and Liz, I will. I, this, this year just made me crazy. <laughs> no, I, I understand. I Listen, this part to write about a two and fourteen team. Trust yeah, me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have someone who could feel for me. Anyway, yes, I'll be doing something shortly. 
Okay, very, very good. Well, once again, you can find me, Sonia, on um, Twitter at mom, the number two, the number three, RN. Um, you can find me writing once again, of course, about my Detroit Lions on NFLfemale.com. And, you know, draft talk coming up, Sue talk coming really, really <laughs> soon, some more Sue talk. Oh. Um, and then you can also find me writing with the guys over at A Good Sports Hang. Um, so come, make sure you check those guys out and me too. Um, we talk any and all types of sports. Veer Green and I have our little column going on, um, Going Green, where once again we just discuss any and everything sports related. So yeah, make sure you check that out too. Okay. My girl Sharona. <laughs> awesome, awesome show, ladies. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we will definitely be back next week. Uh, should be a great show with free agency, hot and heavy. And um, I think we're talking NFC North next NFC. week. My girl Sonia may not be with me. I'm, I'm going to miss her. I'm going um, to miss her dearly, but she'll be <laughs> back the week after that. We'll have a guest co-host helping me out next week talking NFC North. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports by Sharona. Uh, definitely catch our weekly NFL articles where we catch you up on what's going on around the league and I'm looking forward to linking Kat's article. We always like to highlight some of the articles that are being put out by our NFL female OFR. So I'm going to be on the lookout for Kat's <laughs> article so I, I can link that in there. Check out my um, interview with Rotoviz Radio talking uh, NFL draft, free agency, what the Titans are going to do. I'll post a link to that on Twitter. And uh, Friday morning we'll be back. We're live. We're um, unfiltered. Game over with Bastai and Sharona on um uh, two hour show so um, stay tuned in for that we'll be back next week thanks for watching and have a very pleasant evening and shout out to Liz as always we love you without, without you none of this would be possible bye bye <laughs>